the next item of business. Uh, the next item on the order paper is a motion from the Committee on Procedures to amend standing orders. I call on the clerk to read the motion. That the motion to amend standing orders of the Assembly as detailed on the order paper be agreed. I call the Deputy Chairperson of the Committee on Procedures, Mr Tom Buchanan, to move the motion. Mr Buchanan. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I beg to move. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed that an hour should be allocated for this debate. Ten minutes will be allowed to move the motion and ten minutes for the wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. Mr Buchanan, please open the debate on the motion. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. On behalf of the Committee on Procedures, I am pleased to bring this motion to amend standing orders before the House uh, this afternoon. And on behalf of the Committee on Procedures, I would like to convey my sincere thanks to the Assembly officials involved in drafting these amendments. This was a huge task, given the short period of time that they had to produce the draft standing orders. Normally, this amount of work would take weeks rather than days. And as another display of the exemplary support uh, provided to this Assembly during these difficult times, and I'm sure every member in the House today will uh, agree and recognise that. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, we are currently facing far from normal times. It is clear that to allow the Assembly to continue to carry out its business whilst adhering to public health advice and keeping members and staff as safe as possible, there is an urgent requirement to make changes to usual Assembly procedures. Therefore, the Committee on Procedures was asked to urgently consider and bring this motion before the House this afternoon. And Mr Speaker, I will provide some background uh, to this motion. At the beginning of plenary on Monday, the 16th of March, the Speaker of the House reflected that business as usual could not continue in the Assembly during the current period. Following further conversations with party whips, uh, the Speaker wrote to uh, MLAs on the 18th of March, setting out some initial changes and went on to explain that the Business Committee would give further consideration to future business and also ways in which the Assembly operates uh, might change to accommodate social distancing. Significant changes have already been agreed by the Assembly in so far as temporarily suspending question time, private members' motions not being scheduled, and members have, have also been asked not to table uh, written questions in the usual manner. Furthermore, the Business Committee recently identified a number of potential issues that may arise during the current circumstances and considered several solutions to these issues. The agreed way forward informed the, the proposed standing order 111 to 116, which are set out on the order uh, papers today. In light of the current circumstances in relation to COVID-19, the Chairperson's Liaison Group also met on the 24th of March to consider a number of proposed changes to the Committee's procedures. These changes are designed to allow for the continued operation of committees when, when several committee members may be unavailable or it is not possible for a physical committee meeting to take place. Both the Business Committee and the Chairperson's Liaison Group were content to bring draft standing orders to the Committee on Procedures for their assessment. At its meeting on Wednesday, the 25th of March, the Committee on Procedures agreed the draft standing orders, which subsequ subsequently brings us here to the House to this debate this afternoon. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, that provides a short background to these amendments, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Speaker, the Business Committee, and the Chairperson's Liaison Group for bringing these changes to the Committee on Procedures at such a crucial time. Mr. Speaker. Mr Speaker, um, uh, I will now briefly cover um, what, these proposal, what these proposed changes will mean for ongoing Assembly and Committee business. Regarding plenary sessions and Assembly business, it is imperative that members maintain social distancing at all times during the current period. and This includes here in the Assembly Chamber and especially during divisions. And Mr Speaker, Social distancing cannot currently be maintained should a division be called. 
We are all aware that under the current standing orders, all members who wish to vote must pass through at least one of the lobbies in this chamber. This is extremely problematic in the current uh, circumstances and situation that we currently find ourselves in. However, the Assembly already has limited uh, provision for proxy voting under Standing Order 2711. This provides that if any member is present within the precincts of the Assembly and is disabled by infirmity from passing through a lobby, his or her name may be communicated by his or her party whip to the lobby clerks and tellers and may be included in the numbers counted. Considering Consideration has been given whether this principle could also be applied in the current circumstances to allow votes to be cast on behalf of members so they do not, do not have to physically go through uh, or be in the chamber to go through the lobbies. Currently, Standing Order 55 7 provides for each party uh, a delegation present at Business Committee to cast a number of votes equivalent to the number of members who adhere to the whip of the party. The same applies for the collection of smaller parties and independent members. The proposed Standing Order 115 provides for a similar model for plenary. Notice must be given in writing to the Speaker, where a member allows their vote to be made by another member. This, sh this should result in a much smaller number of members being present in the Chamber and also for fewer members to have to pass through the lobby. I will briefly uh, cover the proposed changes to the committee business. The proposed Standing Order 115 and 116 cover statutory and standing committee business in relation to um, uh, the, the business and in relation to committee quorum. The chairperson liaison group agreed that it would remain at five when a decision needs to be taken. However, the proposed new standing order allows for any member of a committee, including the chairperson and deputy chairperson, to attend a meeting remotely by both video link or telephone and, and still contribute to quorum. The proposals also allow for a, member, uh, uh, for, for a member of a committee to vote by video link or by telephone. Further to this, the proposed standing orders provide for any member who is not able to attend a meeting in person to delegate authority to another member of the committee to vote on their behalf. Finally, regarding uh, decision making, the proposed standing orders provide for the committee to make decisions without meeting at all, using a procedure whereby the chairperson could provide members with the details surrounding the issue and then gather views and seek concessions from members uh, via correspondence. During its deliberation of these proposals, members of the committee and procedures were generally content with them. There was some discussion around how proxy voting would work for smaller parties or independent members who wished to show their opposition to a particular question in the chamber. Members also queried whether it would be possible to designate the named person only once and not before every plenary uh, throughout the current situation, which would in turn be much more efficient uh, for the business committee. Discussions were also held around whether uh, there should be more than two named persons when it comes to proxy voting. Should that be two, should that be three, or should that be more? Mr. Uh, Speaker, on concluding, of its uh, deliberations, the committee agreed to introduce these new temporary standing orders. The committee also uh, are committed to working with you, the Speaker, in, in future to facilitate any further measures. Inc incidentally, the committee also agreed to write to the Assembly Commission, asking it to explore the facilitation of video conference in all conference uh, rooms. In closing, Mr. Speaker, we bring this uh, motion to the House today. And can I say to members, it's a motion that has a, it's only a temporary measure. It's um, up until the 30th of September 2020, and it can be reviewed if necessary uh, prior to that. And on that basis, and on behalf of the Committee for Procedures, I wish to commend this motion to the House today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you. And can I call Rosemary Barton? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. While this motion on standing orders is temporary and applies from the 31st of March to the 30th of September, the Ulster Unionist Party has some reservations about it, about some of these amendments within the motion. We have seen this chamber already because of the health crisis we are in, 
give consent and support to emergency legislation that undermines democracy and reduces scrutiny. While indeed, given the present situation of COVID-19 and the reduction of the number of members permitted in the chamber, certainly an alternative method of voting must be found for all members to register their vote. One cannot have voters lining up in the lobbies and at the same time observing social distancing. Regarding Standing Order 112, on sitting days, one would expect that the greater majority of the members of the Assembly would be here in their offices in this building. Therefore, they should be able to vote without the need for proxies. Were we not all elected to speak and cast our votes for our constituents? The method proposed within the Standing Order 112 certainly does not allow for this. Therefore, can I suggest that an alternative form for members to cast their vote in person needs to be further investigated? Mr Speaker, the Ulster Unionist Party will, through the Committee for Procedures, proactively seek to amend today's motion. We seek confirmation that these proposals are agile enough to embed improvements and a robust mechanism to protect an individual's mandate vote. Having, having assessed the voices in the chamber today, we do not support this motion. However, we will not force a division. Uh, thank you. And I call Andrew Muir. Call uh, Jerry Carl. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Um, we're obviously living in unprecedented times, in which all the, the old certainties no longer apply. Um, and the health pandemic that surrounds us is the greatest crisis that I, and certainly I'm sure many others, ha have lived through. Uh, it's destroyed too many lives, and it threatens to destroy many more. I, I offer my sympathies and thoughts to everybody uh, affected uh, at this time. Um, and for this reason, obviously, um, it merits the, uh, the, the necessity of this Assembly to give its utmost priority uh, to tackling this pandemic and its far-reaching repercussions. That means scaling back in other areas of work and at the times the, the normal functions, if you will, of this chamber, certainly. Uh, and for that reason, many of these changes and standing orders are justified in the context uh, that we are faced with. Uh, but it's crucial, in, in my view, Mr. Uh, Speaker that we have and we demand the maximum democracy, accountability and scrutiny uh, at this time in order to, to ensure this crisis is, is handled in a way that prioritises the need of the great majority uh, of people and the, not the interests of the powerful and the wealthy. If we need a shutdown of society, yes, uh, but we cannot under any circumstances allow a shutdown of democracy. Quite the contrary, now is precisely the time to fight for an expansion of democracy. Um, in politics, economics, generally speaking, uh, towards the interests of, of ordinary people. And changes to standing orders um, or the functions of this Assembly must recognise this, in my opinion, to ensure maximum space for democracy throughout this unprecedented uh, time. And whilst, Mr Speaker, I recognise that normal procedure uh, cannot resume in terms of speaking arrangements and, and other items relating to this chamber, should it not be the case that the valuable and important workers in our canteen should be allowed to self-isolate at this time with their pay and terms and conditions protected also? Whilst canteens and restaurants are rightly closing across the country, shouldn't we practice in this House what we are enforcing elsewhere? Something that only dawned on me today. Um, we shouldn't be putting workers in this building at risk um, at this time, or their families uh, as well. Mr. Speaker, because already the, the rich and the powerful and the wealthy are trying to shape uh, the response to this crisis in their own interests. Governments across the world have faced a basic choice uh, throughout this crisis between defending profits or saving lives, and too often they have chosen the former. Already, employers are forcing workers into dangerous uh, conditions, risking their lives in order to shore up profits. Other workers have been met with widespread job losses where closures have taken place, uh, and bosses have threatened to stop pension payments for the duration of the crisis. And billionaires continue to lobby governments for bailouts to the rich. We will see more of this, no doubt, unless there is an urgent shift in how politics functions uh, generally. And, and people before profit think we need to see uh, 
urgent intervention from the executive and the Westminster government to ensure all workers in the front line are protected with PPE gear. This means health workers, but also other front line services, including retail workers uh, and many more. Uh, moreover, uh, government must ensure that no worker uh, loses their job uh, from this crisis. And a decade ago, the government bailed out uh, its banker friends to, to the tune of at least £500 billion overnight. And now is the time to bail out workers. The state must step in to secure all workers' wages and the uh, for, for workers' wages and the self-employed as well. And we must see an immediate freeze on mortgages, rents, and utility bills. And obvi obviously, there are some changes to procedures which have to take place at this time. But I want to make the case that uh, these points uh, should be heard and should be heard throughout this. Um, crisis and through this uh, period. Finally, Mr. Uh, Speaker, I want to uh, pay tribute to all the frontline um, service workers who are out there, out there risking their lives for us all the health workers, the public sector workers, the retail workers, cleaners, and everybody else. This crisis shows that we need to rely upon them. And despite them previously being described as unskilled workers, they are very much skilled and essential to the functioning of our society. Thank you. Can I ask, are, are there any other members in the House who want to speak? Catherine. Firstly, before I begin, I would like to offer my sincere condolences to the families across Ireland who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. My thoughts and prayers are with them at this time. This motion, seeking to amend standing orders, is unprecedented, but we are facing unprecedented times. These amendments ensure MLAs can meet their obligations as political representatives and members of this Assembly. They ensure that this assembly can operate efficiently and effectively. But equally important, they enable all of us to play our part in thwarting transmission by adhering to social distancing and introducing remote working practices. Finding different ways of working is imperative if we are to delay the spread of this deadly virus. This motion enables MLAs to vote by proxy and committee business to be conducted, conducted remotely, either by video or audio link. This is not just about protecting the lives of MLAs or the people who support their role, although that is important. It's about protecting the lives of others. It's about supporting our health service workers, our doctors and nurses, and all the people that support them, the paramedics, administrators, cleaners, drivers, and others. It's about supporting all the people providing vital services that are supporting our communities. The shop workers, warehouse and delivery workers, postal workers, and others. It will take a determined effort by everyone to halt the spread of this pandemic by minimising transmission. These are temporary measures with a six-month reconsideration limit. I am urging you to support this motion. Thank you. And I know if other members wishing to uh, contribute, can I call Gary Middleton to wind? Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I welcome the opportunity to conclude today's debate on the motion to amend standing orders. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank all of the members who have made uh, contributions. As outlined, this amendment has come to the House today following a request from the Business Committee and the Chairperson's Liaison Group uh, to introduce urgent temporary provisions to allow Assembly and Committee business to proceed over the coming weeks and months. As the responsibility to amend standing orders lies with the Committee on Procedures, the Committee agreed to consider this matter. Mr Speaker, these proposed amendments bring fundamental changes, albeit temporary ones, uh, to the plenary and assembly business as well as committee business. We are all too aware of the current circumstances we are in, and it is imperative that we as an assembly do all that we can to protect one another, the staff and the building users as well. As explained by the Deputy Chairperson, the changes will allow for wider proxy voting uh, provisions within this chamber. This will allow social distancing in the lobbies, should a division be called. For committee business, these proposals will allow any member of a committee, including the Chair and Dep Deputy Chair, to attend a meeting remotely, by video link or by telephone. They also allow for a member of a committee to vote by video link or telephone. They also go further by allowing committees to make decisions without meeting, using a procedure whereby the chairperson would provide members on the detail uh, surrounding the issue uh, and then gather views and seek consensus from members via correspondence. Mr Speaker, throughout the debate we've heard from a number of members. Obviously, the, the vice chair outlined uh, his remarks on behalf of the committee. 
Uh, Rosemary Barton um, gave her comments on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party and, and, and referred to uh, the need for alternatives to be looked at, uh, alternative forms of, of uh, ways for members to vote. Um, the difficulty, of course, with this is the fact that, well, all of this is under review, and I think that we need to be mindful of that and the temporary nature uh, of these uh, of these measures been put in place. Uh, Jerry Carroll talked about the unprecedented times that we're in, the merits of the, the Assembly looking at measures, but obviously did demand maximum accountability and scrutiny uh, and, and stress the need that uh, there cannot be a shutdown of democracy, and I think we would all agree with that. Uh, Catherine Kelly um, talked again about unprecedented times and the, the amendments uh, were needed to ensure that MLAs can meet their obligations as elected representatives, but also uh, enabling us all to play our part in tackling uh, this emergency and this crisis that we face. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, before I conclude, I would just like to reiterate what the Deputy Chairperson has said to, and to thank all of the Assembly officials involved in drafting these measures at very short notice. They have worked night and day to bring these provisions to us today, and I thank them for that. So, therefore, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I would also like to thank everyone for contributing to today's debate, and I commend the motion to the House. Okay, members, before we proceed to the question, I would remind members that this motion requires cross community support. And the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. And since I'm hearing ayes from all sides of the House, then the motion is. Uh, carried and cross committee support is demonstrated. The motion is agreed. Thank you very, very much. So the 